What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, your host. So today when it comes to Mac OS Sequoia, I'll be happy to let you know that we now have the RC version, release candidate version, previously known as the GM version. And you can see it right here. Now for me, this update coming from the previous Mac OS 15.3 beta 3, you can see it comes in at 1.97 gigs. And here it tells you a few things of what the update includes among others which were not disclosed but it's not all that Apple released today in fact Apple released iOS 18.3 RC alongside the iPadOS version they also released iPadOS 17.7.4 RC for select iPad models and we have macOS 15.3 RC of course this is the video for that tvOS 18.3 RC visionOS 2.3 RC and watchOS 11.3 RC models of these updates i do cover here on the channel at half man half tech so if you want to keep up to date then definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you stay updated for now i'm just quickly going to update my device and then we're going to look at the new features and changes that this software update has to offer if you're a content creator like myself you probably know that having a good video editing software goes a long way in bringing your creative vision to life and one such editing software that i've been using to do just that is Filmora. This video editing software is actually loaded with a bunch of effects that enable users to monetize by posting videos on social media platforms. If I was to take this exact video and then manually reframe for each social media that's out there to probably take me forever and my creative process would slow down. But thankfully, Filmora offers an auto frame feature that lets you quickly turn long form videos into short form content with the ability to publish to multiple platforms. If you look at this segment of the video, it sort of looks kind of plain and boring and that's because it doesn't have auto captions, which is another feature that Filmora offers. It has the ability to generate auto captions, which help people who are impaired and captions also improve the video engagement. I speak two languages, but if I wanted to create content in many other different languages, which I feel like my viewers would benefit more then i can also use filmora as it offers ai translation a feature that translates your video into any language of your choice. Si eres un creador de contenido como yo, probablemente sabes que tener un buen software de edición de video, Filmora also has an AI autoclone feature that reads out text that you would have written as if you are the one speaking. There's actually many features and tools that Filmora offers. I can probably go on and on, but since I demonstrated this using mainly the Windows PC version of Filmora, I'll be happy to let you know that multi-platform support is actually there with Filmora so you can use it on mobile you can also use Filmora on iPad on Mac just for added convenience and if you want to try it out for yourself and see how it can improve your video editing process then check the link in the description below and see what Filmora can do for you just like that my device is now up to date if we go into the system settings right here and then go to storage just to see how much Mac OS is taking up you can see it's it's quickly going to do a calculation and right here it's taking 22.07 gigs and if we click on the more info tab you can see the new build number that we have with Mac OS 15.3 is 24d60 and this should be the official release that comes out pretty soon unless if Apple sees it fit to release a secondary release candidate version and then Apple intelligence has slightly increased by 200 megabytes you can see here before before it was 5.5 now it's 5.52 gigs in terms of the new features that this software has to offer you can see right here when you open an application that supports Emoji, messages happens to be one of them but there's a couple of applications that you can use Emoji in and when you go to this emoji icon you can see just besides where it says describe an emoji we have gen emoji finally that's here natively on mac os and if you click on it right there it says start with a few words or a phrase that best describes your idea 
I put in a prompt that says a red car, but for some reason with this update, not sure if my storage has anything to do with this, but you can see it still says start with a few words or phrase that describes your idea. But some of the gen emojis that I was able to generate natively on Mac are these. So an egg wearing glasses, I got one that looks like this, a lion using a computer. And then I think this was a car on a sunny day. You can see some of them that I was able to generate, but for some reason, it seems to be glitchy or buggy for me in this case. The calculator app also got a minor update for macOS. It's not a redesign, but it has now the ability to do continuous repeat functions. So for example, if I say 10 uh, plus two, just like this, and then continue to hit the equal sign, it will continue to add the two to whatever the total current sum is. And then if I say, for example, minus six, you can see it to continue to subtract six until I change that. And if I continue to change whatever current operation is, you can see it has that continuous operation function. Within the system settings right here, when you go to where it says notifications right here, you can see there is this section that says summarize notifications and a new change that has been added, you can see there's a disclaimer right here that says summaries may contain errors. So a disclaimer telling you that not all summaries are going to be accurate. And at the same time, if you had turned on notification summaries for news and entertainment, those are currently unavailable and users who opt in will be able to see them again in the future when it becomes available but for the rest it remains unaffected. If you have a device, be it a Mac, an iPad, or an iPhone that supports Apple intelligence, this is the list of all the compatible devices. Apple has made a change by enabling Apple intelligence on by default before during the previous beta stages and with this one now that apple has made a change we had to actually go into our apple intelligence and Siri settings and then enable apple intelligence and then you would be put on a waiting list but now apple is enabling apple intelligence for all devices that support it by default and there's no need to be on a waiting list and in case you're wondering when apple intelligence is going to be available in other regions 2025 is the year where it's going to come to the greater part of the eu and it's going to include chinese and then english indian english singapore it's also going to be available in French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Spanish, and Vietnamese. When it comes to automation and home, I'll be happy to let you know that robot vacuum support has been added. And now if you have a compatible robot vacuum, you can set it up in your home app or you can set it up for automation using the Siri prompts. But at this point in time, very limited vacuum support this and hopefully this get standardized and becomes more mainstream. There is a slight improvement when it comes to image playground. The images that are generated at this point in time after updating to this update seems to be slightly better. The prompts response time is also better, but then I don't know for me because the gen emoji is not working whether this is an improvement or not, but keep trying or repeat different prompts that you might have generated maybe on macOS 15.2 and compare those with macOS 15.3 and see the difference. When it comes to the App Store, you might want to check after this update is released officially to see if you have any applications or softwares that need to be updated to work properly with this new update. I do have a few that popped up right here. And at the same time, when it comes to Apple Arcade, I'll be happy to let you know that Apple has added and improved some of the existing games and also added some new games. So you can see this Skate City New York, it's one of the new ones. And there's kind of other few new games here. I'm not a big Apple Arcade fan, but if you are, then you might want to check on the new games or if you had existing ones that you used to play, they've added some more categories and settings that you can customize. And also I think this one, Three Kingdom Heroes is one of those new games. 
unfortunately when it comes to the apple mail app we don't have the categories yet and the code hasn't been re-added yet unlike what we were seeing before i think it was mac os 15.2 where we saw categories when you would search it up it would show some sort of code within that but at this point in time it's not available but i think there's a very good chance that we will we are going to be getting mail categories with the next betas of mac os which is going to be mac os 15.4 basically and when that comes out i'm definitely going to let you know so do subscribe to stay updated in case you're wondering the safari version has been updated if you are going to be updating from a previous version such as uh, mac os 15.2 the version of safari that you're going to see is now safari version 18.3 and also the build number has been slightly incremented compared to the previous beta of mac os 15.3 and you can see it right there now when it comes to iphone mirroring there was actually an issue that i was experiencing where it wouldn't quit the only way to close it would be to force quit it by doing the com the shortcut prompt or by basically doing the force quit right here and now after i updated i can easily close the iphone mirroring application without an issue i'm not sure if i'm the only one experiencing this issue it's still here when it comes to airdrop i've sent it into apple using the feedback assistant app and it has to do with airdrop i can send files from my mac to my iphone but anything from my iphone one that's on ios 18 betas or one that's on ios 17 i can't send any files from my iphones to my mac not sure why that's the case if you're experiencing this issue please let me know in the comments below in terms of the release notes for this update you can see what apple told us for there's a new feature when it comes to apple intelligence and it says that for users upgrading to mac os 18.3 apple intelligence will be enabled automatically during mac onboarding uh, users will have to access will have access to apple intelligence features after setting up their devices to disable apple intelligence users will have to navigate the apple intelligence and series settings pane and turn off apple intelligence toggle this will disable apple intelligence features on their device which we've already covered in this video and there's a resolved issue that has to do with swift ui with regards to modifiers but other than that that's all they told us about but also they mentioned that this update contains important bug and security fixes but at this point in time apple hasn't updated their page but once this update comes out officially just like its predecessor mac os 15.2 you are going to be able to see uh, the CVE entries or the common vulnerabilities and exposures that Apple has patched and previously there were actually a lot and you can see all the list that was there previous and I think this time around we might not have as many but it's always good to check this page just to see what are the CVE entries available for the different updates that Apple releases and to see whether you are affected in any shape or form that's how this update is for me if you like this video hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video